Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. So me and my dad went toy hunting at the Kempton Palace toy show up in London. And this is the second time me and my dad have actually been to London on, on a buying or selling trip. We originally went to Sandown and sold twice there um, and then now we just buy there because the price of the stalls at Sandown is quite expensive. Um, but a Kempton Palace show, um, or Kempton Racecourse? Anyway, it's called Kempton Toy Show. Um, we've never um, never been there. We'd, I've heard of it a couple of years back, and I've seen signs for it for, um, advertising the show, but we never really went before. We never really, because it was quite far away from London. London's a good two-hour journey for us. So um, we went on the mission to buy. We were told in advance that it was a show where it only had 200 stalls. But 200 stalls is, is a good size, but there was a lot of die-cast uh, cars and trains and it um the problem about die cast stuff is it's not really die cast it's more the i said more the train stuff is you get a lot of people selling bits and spares which is really cool to see but they don't seem to be taking much money and it only seems to be a place for those sort of collectors to get together and hang out and chat and maybe make occasional purchase which is great and i, and I appreciate that but what's annoying is for people like me and my dad and lots of other people um most most of you watching this i can imagine um, you kind of want your kind of like pop culture toys. You want your toys from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s and modern stuff. You know, you want your, your James Bond, your Star Wars, your He-Man, maybe your Batman stuff in the 60s, all that sort of stuff. And it can be quite tricky to find stuff. So when we do go there, we have, you have to dig deep. Now, I didn't film much footage from what you can see um, because the show was a lot of um, the same things really. But there was a few good people there. Um, we saw Aaron... Um, from Empire Toys one from Free Eight and Mr. Dan Plastic, but both from the Toy Division live streams they do every week. We saw um, a few, loads of other people there, and it was it, it was nice actually. It was nice to see a few people, um, uh, people we can call like you know, toy dealer friends. So with that in mind, we were on a buying trip to get stuff at reasonable prices that we can either add to our collections, we can either sell at other toy shows or sell on the groups and just kind of bring more toys to the market really. So let's have a look at what we bought. So some of this stuff is my dad's and some of it is mine. So first up, the first one of the first stalls we um, looked at was a stall selling lots of football training cards and hockey and basketball and baseball and that sort of stuff. And I'll talk about that stall a bit more in a minute. But um, on, on that store they had this and my dad paid £40 for this. This is a Sean Conray um, model kit. It's, you know, not the not the, um, not the most expensive uh, model kit to buy. It's probably one of the better, cheaper ones in the market. Uh, these sell regularly for about £80. So it just says Sean Conray on it because I imagine Juniper um, Model Company, which is Juniper probably do not have the license to James Bond, that's why James Bond's not written anywhere on it. But it's a good sculpt, you can tell it's um, Sean Connery, it's in his kind of white tux, got a bit of a diamonds are forever sort of look to it. Um, it says film and TV stars, these were very popular back in the 90s and 80s and early 2000s. So on the side we have Sean Connery here, they did um, Gene Anderson and David Coffney, um, Modern Scully from X-Files, I mean, then Steed and um, Miss Pill from um, the Avengers. Kind of got really boring back. But yeah, this was only £40 and um, this probably will go on our um, on our Facebook page and it'll probably be around about the £75 to £80 mark. But cool, let's crack on. So the next store we looked at had some Axeman pieces on it. They had some um, more Axeman stuff I'll show in a minute, but they had pieces and I basically did a bit of a deal. So I might have paid it too much for it. It's up to you to decide. I paid thirty pounds for this this bag of um bits. So this is a German Stormtrooper backpack. A little bit of fading on the sides, but it looks all right. It looks the part. There's basically just a box. So I started picking pieces out. He informed me that that this was not vintage. This is the bit that goes over the, the breastplates. For the ceremonials. Um, this is what's called a it's like elastic sort of like band thing, strap thing, goes around the bottoms of the legs of the um, action man. 
this is a camera used from the um, like jungle exploration team. Came out in the mid early seventies, I think nineteen seventy two, seventy three actually. Uh, it's something you don't really see them often. It's not worth making much money, um, but a space explorer type glove, and finally a head, which is a bit scruffy, but he'll do. Um, so that there, also included in that £30, was this bag. Now, this bag here has some Star Wars pieces. So I just I just glanced at it really, I was just kind of slightly interested. Um, this is the canopy for the um, vintage Star Wars snow speeder from Empire Strikes Back. People are always after these canopies because they find their original ones and they're usually missing. So that's cool to have. And there was two little pieces in here. Um, we have a, a what appears to be a top type gun. I think this is for the snow speeder as well. That's one of those things that's always missing. So that's a good thing to find. And eventually um, a speeder bike this time from Return of the Jedi. This is one of the handlebars. Um, yeah, again, a piece that always goes missing. So those pieces are quite cool. I think so far I've made my 30 pound back, but also included was this. Um, it needs a bit of a clean, but it's vintage Star Wars letter set 12 envelopes. The packaging's broken a bit here and the envelopes have got a bit dirty because of it. But this is something you never see. You never see these at toy shows. Or if you do, you maybe see them at NEC, but you, yeah, I don't think there's much money in it. I think it's you know it's what it is, but it's something really cool. It's something of its time. Do you know what I mean? 1977 it came out. I imagine these if in the UK would probably come out in 78, when Star Wars was widely released in the UK. Yeah, imagine sending these to your friends, inviting you to birthday parties, or sending hello to your grandmother in Scotland or something. Um, they say made a force with you on the back. Pretty cool. Um, will I be selling those? Probably. I like the idea of having. I collect um, Star Wars toys from the first Star Wars film. Um, I used to collect quite a lot of Star Wars stuff, and I sold a lot of it. Most of my Jedi and Emperor Strikes Back stuff is gone. But from the first film, it's hard to find stuff for it, so that's pretty cool. Um, so the next lot of stuff I bought, I bought off a guy who was selling. Uh, the same guy who he bought the um, James Bond model kit from. Now he was selling football cards, uh, as in training cards, which I do collect. So I'll go through these really quick, because I know some people might not want to hear about it. But I basically paid, I think it was £40 for this, which I think I paid a bit too much for it. But this is um, David Beckham's, I believe his first ever England kit football card. Comes in this really cool kind of like these are called like one touch cases where they're magnetically closed up. Uh, very cool thing to, um, to get. This is a card that's good up and up, up, up and up in value. But I think I paid a bit too much for it. I mean, I because it's raw. If it was graded at that price, it would have been great. But because it's raw, and it has a little bit of a ding in one of the corners, which brings the price down. But very nice, cool card. I mean, people are asking like six hundred pounds for these graded in like SGC ten. So to get it for what I paid for it, it was a good value, I think. Um, these were also quite cool, good value as well. So these are just the 1967, 68, A, uh, A B, and C. I think it's A, B, and C. Yes, it is. Um, football cards, basically. Um, so this is Jack Charlton, brother of Bobby Charlton, England 66 hero. Um, Ian St. John who passed away a few years ago. The cards are really nice, that's why I was happy to pay. They're only like £2.50 each on average, I think it came to that sort of price. And then a um, Jeff Hurst in his England kit. Now there's not many Jeff Hurst cards on the market from his sort of playing days. So I thought that was a good good bargain. Now this is the thing I paid too much for. So I paid for those loose cards you just saw then and this, I paid £30. So this was advertised for sale for £25. This is a Ronaldo's, an early Ronaldo card. It's got this little strip at the bottom, which I think you peel off as well, like a sticker, and you send it away or something. Um, yeah, these you can buy in this sort of condition for like £15 on eBay. 
uh, maybe less so I've made a mistake buying this the guy clearly overpriced so yeah I'm not gonna be bothering paying high prices again because I, I was a bit stupid really I really should really really should have checked out price on eBay before I went for it but I just got a bit carried away really because I mean, you never see cards at like football shows uh, football cards at toy shows so that's pretty cool it's a cool card don't get me wrong I'll make my money back but yeah as I said if any, anybody's into collecting sports cards or training cards in general they're going up in price so, so if you like anything you like buy it now then on something my dad bought which I'm not going to show in its full form because it's too big is the probably the, the one toy that everybody says they really want and that is the 1960s Johnny 7 gun it's really really cool it's missing a little pieces but it's not broken from what we can tell this bit here comes out and it forms like another sort of gun and then this bit here good kicks on the back there you go Johnny 7 the condition's a bit ropey I mean in terms of like the, it needs a good clean but apart from that, it's not broken, which is the best thing about it. Now, getting pieces for this is going to cost a lot of money. You're talking maybe easy £100 plus to get the remaining pieces. Now, if you ever had this as a kid, you were very, very lucky because this is something that people, every time we go to a toy show and we bring one of these, people are just all over it. I believe it because it's OMA, that means it's made in the UK. They become like missiles and bits and bobs and everything to go with it. Very cool, very in demand. Everybody's kind of wanting it. So my next little purchase, I bought this bag of bits of um, figures. I paid too much for it. I know I did. Um, yeah, I paid fifty pounds. I originally said to the guy, "Would you do twenty-five? And he's like, "No way! It's way worth way more than that." You can always tell when people say that because they don't really know what they're talking about, really. But is it worth more than fifty pound? Maybe. Let me get my little stand. We can have a look at it. I tend to buy toy lines just to check them out and see if they are actually um what it's all about, really. If you if you need to, if you're consider call yourself a toy dealer, you really should start to know about a lot of toy lines because. If you come across a toy which is worth a lot of money, then you really should know. But so uh, it's always best to kind of like make a few mistakes, really. Now I hope I didn't make a mistake with this. This is all these action figures here are a bit ropey. They need a bit of a clean, but I'm hoping they'll clean up all, all right. So this is a He-Man. Um, he just needs a bit of a clean. He's not that bad. His fingers are all intact. He hasn't got many scratches on him or chews. Nobody's been fighting him so yeah that's kind of all right then we have this chap now I don't really know their names so you're gonna have to um, help me out this is like the um, Thundercats guy I don't know what his name is I can't remember what his name is it's, as you can tell he's quite ropey down here and his mechanisms kind of all right and he's also really dirty it feels like he's just been taken out of a um of a loft or some really really dusty so this is the problem about dealers. Some dealers are there are kind of um, the kind of people that just want to get rid of stuff, and they don't really look at what they've got, and they just think of a price off the top of their head and they just ask for it. Um, it's one of the miniature Thundercats. Now, originally he wanted five pound each for these turtles, but the problem is with turtles is these are so common to find. You can if you come to my show at toy shows, I don't even charge five pound for a loose turtle like this because it's missing all its pieces. But he's actually kind of alright. He just needs a bit of a dust. But his um, paint works quite nice. Somebody must know what this is. Is this Thundercats? Or is it one of those really weird 80s toy lines aimed at like girls? Like a snuffle bear or something. Something stupid like that. <laughs> then we got. Um, is it Wily Cat and Wily Kit? One of the two. The usual kind of scuffs and, and dirt on them. Now you might be thinking, why did you pay fifty pound for all these? Well, here you guys never told. Well, my thought, first thought was, if there is something in there which is rare and it is worth a bit of money, then I've, I've made a, I've done a good thing and I've learnt something. If I have lost, then I'll make most of my money back anyway, because I charged you know three pound a total. I'm lucky, um, and I'll probably get that. 
and then the Thundercats figures you come out for a <coughs> couple of quid each and then somebody will buy them <coughs> um, Thundercats guy, I don't know what that dice called but it doesn't seem to be too bad condition and then last but not least um, another Wily Cat or Wily Kit they've always got really bad paintwork on their faces but this one came with a board, which I, I know is worth a bit of money. I think it's worth about £10 on its own. And then finally, a Dribble? Dribble? I think that's what they're called. Um, I know these can be worth a bit of money. I think he's the most common one. But I've seen him go online for about £15 in this sort of condition. In mint condition, he's about £50, I think. But what most people don't understand when they try and sell their toys like this chap is it's all, it's all about condition. Nobody wants to buy a rough figure. You know who's going to buy a yak face off you for £250 if it looks like it's been run over and it's missing its pieces and it's you know got its arm missing and chewed up. So it's all about condition. So that was all those figures. What Did I make a mistake paying £50? I think I did all right with £50. I think if I was starting off a little... 80s toy collection, I wouldn't have overpaid. I think He-Man would be right. I think if I can clean He-Man up, I might be able to get a right price on him. Maybe say a £10 or something, or £12. And then the Turtles figures, I can probably get £10 back on them easily. I think the Wily Cat, Wily Kit figure, I could probably get 15 for him with the board or her with the board. I think I could probably get 15 to £20 for that one there. Then the other figures, I think I can get £10, £15 for. So, yeah, not bad. Okay, let's have a look at what else we got. So on the same store that we bought the envelopes for Star Wars and the action pieces, my dad purchased these three figures. The first one we have here is a um, Action Man Navy Attack. So he is in okay condition. He needs to basically have his hand needs to be pushed back in. He needs to have his hair kind of repainted or at least a bit of a face scrub. I'm not really a fan of repainting these figures, but he was originally listed at £55, but we made a deal on all three of these figures. Um, we then have the SES figure. These are um, really in demand. Everybody kind of wants them. Unfortunately, he's got split in the back, which is very common with these. But it can be taped up with a bit of black tape, I suppose. Um, has his weapon. He does have 40 of hands, unfortunately, because most of these hands... Um, gripping hands rot so if you ever have a figure where it's missing its hands you can actually get replacements and then finally the police officer now he is a police motorcyclist uh, he sometimes comes with a black belt sometimes doesn't sometimes comes with a scarf sometimes doesn't he is missing though the green visor that goes over his eyes well, apart from that he's all right he just needs a bit of a, a bit of a wipe over a TLC but all these three figures, um, we got a deal for £140, which might seem a, a lot considering. It's a bit strange about Batman figures. If you listed that now for, say, £75, £80, it might not sell. But then somebody else will list one, same condition, and it'll sell for like £150. It's really odd the way um, people buy Man toys at the moment. Um, but for £140, I think we're going to do all right on this. A little bit of profit. Um, it's gonna take a bit of time to sell, but they look nice on our toy shows, and they look good on the, on our website, on our websites, or on our Facebook page, and on our um, Instagram page, which is Time Tunnel Toys UK. So yeah, very cool to have those three. These are my dad's, so they'll be going to into his collection, or most likely gonna be sold. Um, he also picks up this really cool 1960s fairy light Thunderbirds figure has a really cool badge I'm not sure if that badge is real I think it is real it looks real um, the sash is always ripped so it's quite nice to actually see it in this condition any problem is that on his foot is a bit yellowing on the white of his shoe but his shoes are quite easy to pick up he is very nice um, I used to be a big fan of Thunderbirds as a child growing up so I'm gonna say this is probably Alan Tracy of Thunderbirds 3 because he has a pink sash if I remember rightly Scott has the blue Virgil has the yellow Alan has the pink I think Gordon has the orange and I think John has a white 
I'm not sure if they did all, all, all the um, five brothers. I see this one quite a lot. Very cool. This would be on um, on our Facebook page and on our Instagram. So if you are interested, drop us a, a message. So as I was walking around, um, I saw a little bit of Jurassic Park. So I was on a bit of a dino dinosaur hunt as well, and I saw I think it was Robo Toys had a um, the dinosaur which goes with this set. So I picked up this. This is from the Lost World. I had this as a kid. Basically, you've got a big dinosaur goes on here, and it has like a piece of meat that comes off him, and you can like pretend you're doing surgery. It's supposed to have like a computer desk here as well, and some other bits. Um, they're at, Robert Toys was asking, I believe it's Robert Toys was asking like fifty pound for the for the actual figure missing the piece. Um, so just the figure, and it's it's a really expensive set now. I, I remember having this as a kid. I remember it being cheap. I remember buying this. My my, my, my brother did with pocket money, so it wasn't too expensive but boxed and complete is like a lot of money um so i didn't pick up that dinosaur because i just couldn't afford, afford it right now but when i walked over to aaron's from empire toys stall he had this in a box and i was like ah i know exactly what it is and he explained to me he had a bit of a, bit of a Jurassic park job lot and he sold some pieces we didn't really know what some pieces were so this and this which I believe is a, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, a um, toy line basically which mixes Cadillacs and Elvis Presley style imagery with dinosaur hunting and fighting. These moulds were used um, for, um, I think previously some of them were used for Dino Riders. I'm not a Dino Riders collector so I don't know. This might be a Dino Rider but I'm pretty sure it's actually the Tyco Cadillacs and Dinosaur range. I think when they released Dino Riders, after the after like the um couple of years of selling them, when they basically started at the end of the end of the line, I think they used some of the molds for um Cadillacs and dinosaurs. So either way, this is a really cool little dinosaur. I just paid ten pounds for both of these things. I mean, that there, yeah, it was missing loads of pieces, but eventually, if I can put that together, that'd be awesome. So that's like a little bit of a project. And then uh, Cadillacs and dinosaurs, dinosaur for, for you know part of the deal. That's great. Carded, I've sold one of these, not this one, but another one recently for £35. I'd previously sold some more, a little bit cheaper, but the price of these dinosaurs are going straight for the roof. Now, before um, I get on to the big one, the thing, the big job lot of stuff I've picked up, um, I thought I'd let you into a bit of the story of how I picked it up, really. So I was going through... Um, I'm going through a bit of a, um, a research on a certain toy line, and I'm, last week... I picked up this. This is a Mighty Max play set. It comes, um, I bought it from eBay and it came with all the figures. I'm not gonna put it together, but I'll just show you. It comes with like really cool Scorpion. Max is in there. It's got the um, the cable which goes across and in that little room there, the little thing there is the mummy figure. Um, for years these things have been pretty worthless because if they're missing their pieces they're just shells and so people don't really buy them but if you can get them complete they're starting to go for a bit of money so as luck would have it i picked all this up <laughs> um last week and i paid i think i paid about 20 pounds for it maybe maybe less maybe 15 pounds for it on an auction plus postage because i had this as a kid and i really wanted to start collecting these again and have just the ones i had as a kid but the um, I was amazed how much these sort of things go for. I was just doing a bit of glancing at it. I wasn't really researching it as much. I was just looking at it. How much would you get for a shell? And I'm thinking maybe five pounds for the shell. And then with the figures, you're looking at like a fiver each. So this is probably worth it for what I paid. But I imagine they give for about 20 pounds sort of thing. And then I went to the toy show and I had in my head, I'm going to find Mighty Max. I'm going to try and see if I can find somebody still who's got Mighty Max, regardless of what it is, and I'm going to buy it. And then I found this chap who had a stall ready to be set up, but it was really about two hours in and it was filled with plastic bags that looked like this. And so you can, I can work out what it was. And then I noticed on this stall we had a few turtles and things like that. I thought, okay, this is an older guy. He looks like he's pulled out some of these whole loft of the toys. So I started going through it and I noticed, oh, it's Mighty Max. 
And I said to him, I'm interested in buying all these Mighty Max. And he went through it all and piled them up into a big, big bag for me. And we did a deal. And I basically did a bit of a blind deal. I did it based on the fact that if these um, things were loose and had no figures at all, then I would be paying about £5 each for them and I would take the gamble. I noticed there was lots of figures in the bags, so I thought I did all right. And so, yeah, I paid up. Not, I didn't pay up for it. I paid a, a good chunk of money but I didn't pay what I think these are worth because I've Googled these now and noticed they're worth a lot more money on eBay than the price I paid. But I did pay a lot, so it's not, it wasn't like I, it wasn't like I, you know, screwed the guy over. I'm very cautious and, not, and I've never do that to anybody. But the guy was happy with the deal. He made some money on the day and I got a huge lot of Mighty Max. Now let me go through it all and show you what I got. So like I said, I did pay up for all of this. But I paid kind of blind. I was hoping that one or two of these things would be complete. So if we can go through it, we can see if they are or not. So the first Mighty Max thing I got was this one here. It's like a minotaur with his head like this sticking out. It's grubby and needs a good clean. Um, it's my favorite like that at the bottom, and it reveals this cool playset. Um, I loved these as a kid. Um, there you go. There's a piece that could potentially be missing, which is there. That opens up there, but it's nobody in there. I think that's it for now. Um, but yeah, very cool little thing. Oh, there's a little sliding door like this here as well. See, all these pieces could be missing, um, which devalues the the, the item. Now these Mighty Max, if you don't know what these are, they're kind of like a rival to um, Polly Pocket, like the boy version of Polly Pocket. They're made by Bluebird, the same company. Now I do have this little weird goo, which I think probably goes with this set. Let me see if I can put them in the middle. No. So one of the things about these um, toys is they can be quite tricky to put all the pieces back. Because sometimes they don't fit. So this one so far is missing Max, um, the main guy himself, a little kid. But I would say that I think this, um, I think a lot of these pieces are actually going to be in the actual um, bag itself. Next up we've got the Scorpion. Um, I took this one apart yesterday and had a look at it. This is the one I remember as a kid and I really loved it. So he kind of sits like this um, when he's in his normal form. What's cool is as, as a toy with this this one, it's you can pretend this is actually like um, like a big creature chasing Max, and you can also make it a playset. It's really stiff this one. It's got like a I don't want to break it, but um, it does need some WD forty I think. So yeah, another playset again comes with this really cool scorpion thing at the back. This is the one I had as a kid, and I remembered it, and I loved this as a kid. No figures in this one, unfortunately. Um, but fingers crossed, they might be in the bag. Let's put them on the side down there. I do apologise about this kind of setup. I don't have enough space to put the camera tripod and have the have the um, space to film. But hopefully in the future that might get sorted out. Um, this is another one I remember having. I don't remember having it as a kid, as in... I, I don't remember buying it. I think somebody either gave it to us, um, like a friend or something. So this one is also missing pieces. It has the the gun at the front and it has these squid pieces on the side. It looks like it's missing his tail and it looks like it's also missing um, Max and probably another character, maybe like a kind of sea devil or something. These things are really tight, these, um, these, these little, um, rivets on the side of kind of like rusted and um, they would have a towel at the back I think that one's kind of missing unfortunately so next up we've got the giant and I can't really get it on camera already but I'm gonna give it a go this is the giant um like volcano mountain it opens up as a play set I can fill pieces in I can fill that there's pieces in there um it it's really cool um when the guy sold it to me, he said, here's the bag of pieces for this. So I know there is actually um, pieces for it. So 
I'll try and keep my best, try and have a dig through in a minute and have a look. Cool, let me have this bag here. I mean, I paid 75 pounds for everything you see here. I wasn't really gonna give it away because I thought maybe people might get a bit upset when they realized that I, I might have underpaid quite, quite a lot. But, you know, it's dealer to dealer and also, um. I did it as a blind buy. Here's another one which is really gunky. It's one of the smaller ones. He looks like he had something there, but it's missing. But he does come with a Max, which is cool. This is our first Max. That's what he looks like. Like he's obviously really small. They always go missing. That's the problem with Maxes. That's why people collect them. So yeah, he would open up like that, and he. Would, it, but unfortunately, this is rock solid. I think a lot of the rivets in these things go rusty and they are impossible to open up, but a bit of WD-40 might do it. Um, here's another one that people might remember, I remember this one quite a lot. This is like the little um, Daredevil where, um, Dracula style bat thing, vampire bat. Let's see if this one will open up. Oh yeah, this one does. So these uh, play sets are different than say these ones, because they are obviously much bigger and much smaller. But they came at such a cheaper price, price that kids could afford to pay for, buy them with their pocket money. Um, there you've got Devil Bat there. And so that would be your bat. You'd have a place set in here. It's such a cool little design. I'm, I'm surprised these things haven't kept um, more popularity, really, because as a kid, we they were really great for like car trips and stuff like that. Any problem like these sort of things is how do you put them all back together? Yeah. So a lot of these stuff is like, it's, it's kind of a bit gunky and a bit rusted together so it will mean that I have to clean it and that takes time and money is time so I don't necessarily feel, feel like too bad because I think if you're buying and selling toys or anything in general you really need to factor in the, the money side, the, the time side of things um, so yeah next up we got a rat he looks like he's missing his ear uh, and that's, that's it there um, comes with a spider or some kind of creature so it has like a little, little um, like a little cage. There you go. That comes down like that. Is that the rats here? There. No, it's not the rats here. Um, yeah, these things are have lots of pieces and can go, as I said, for good money when complete. So that's the rat creature guy. Then we have some of these little head things. These are like little cool um, key rings. It comes with a, ma with a max there as well. We have another one. I'm not gonna get these out of the bag. I'll show you one of them. So this is the one I remember having as a kid. He's a bit gross. These look like they've been sat in somebody's loft for a good couple of years. So these were even a much cheaper price. You basically get a figure like this and you get a Max inside, which is always good, because Max always goes missing, so. And they're supposed to be like little key rings. Another two in there as well. I think this is a job lot. I think this is a job lot from somebody's house. I think this is a kid who obviously loved Mighty Max and had them all. There's another one there. And somebody threw them in the loft, and this chap's got obviously gone and bought them all up 25 years later. Um, we have this chap he doesn't have a max inside I can hear it not rattling um, and they're really stiff I need to get some I think WD-40 and some soap and water on these there you go that's quite a cool that one so it comes with like a um, like a buried treasure chest I think he's supposed to be like a the man in the iron mask sort of thing There's a lot of dust coming off here, so I'm I, like dirt, so I can imagine it's definitely from somebody's loft. Um, this one here, which has like a really cool knife thing. I remember having this one as a kid and loved it. No Max or anything inside. You can buy like Ma my Max figures off, off eBay, but the problem is they, they're all slightly different. My favorite is the one where he's holding the, um, the lantern. And then we have like a, is it like a werewolf? Very cool, very good for Halloween right now. <laughs> and then we have the 
really cool lizard skull island thing. I'm not gonna get out of the bag because there's loads of pieces with it. I think that's complete. I have some spares and the instructions. So I'm happy to have that and I can probably complete that. Then we've got this random dragon with unfortunately his back wing snapped off, which is really annoying. Um, I don't know what set he goes for, but we'll find out soon. It might be for that Dragon Island set. So this one's one that I was actually looking at buying the other day. Um, this is like a Triceratops dinosaur thing. I was going to pay like £20 for it. But the um, I decided to save my money because I'm trying to trying to save my money for um, a for the toy show, that this, this toy show I bought this from. And also I'm trying to save my money for a really big... Uh, toy purchase, one of my top five most wanted. This is really cool. Has like a swivel style gun slash camera thing from Max to sit on. I think it came with like a professor. I think this is all kind of very very Jurassic Park um, esque sort of um, playset and design. I'm not sure if he's supposed to have like so this goes here and goes like that to create a spike. I'm not sure there must be another one. I think there is. I think the professor or some kind of creature goes for there. So I'm glad to have that one in my collection. I had that as a kid. Um, then we have what this like just the shell of another one which is like a s snail. Um, yeah he's too stiff. There you go. These are really stiff um, toys. I think the um, I'm definitely sure they're the um, rivets are kind of like seized up. Then you have Parts of the fly. Now this is one of my favourite ones. This is the um, severed hand, like a horror one. I think it's supposed to come with a Frankenstein, um, but he appears to be um, yeah, he's missing pieces. He's got the ghost that goes in there, but he's stuck in there anyway. Very cool set, like a graveyard yard sort of thing. which all comes, comes together to make a creepy severed hand. Then we have the Alien. This is a really cool play set. I've never seen this one before. Um, I don't remember owning it or having it. So this is all brand new to me. That's really cool, that popped down. Yeah, imagine some Max can go on there like that. I'm missing a lot of the Aliens, so I need to, um, I really need to sort out, have a good sort out of all these um, sets and work out what I need to, um, to complete them, which ones I'm going to sell, because I'm going to sell what a majority of these, and then which ones I'm going to just keep. But I think most of these are going to be for sale, and I might try and sell some of these at toy shows as well. So when I open these up, this is like the first time I'm opening them up on camera, so it's the first time I have the chance to look at them. This is the snake. It's missing, I imagine, quite a few bits. So it's missing, it's got the um, the bar that goes across, that's good. It's missing max. Yeah, it's missing Max. It's missing the um, the mummy as well, and it's also missing the scorpion. That's a shame because this is a really like desirable set. This one, pretty common, but um, it's this one that a lot of people like. Uh, and then we have the skull. Really cool. Um, needs a clean which I've said a thousand times so far with these sets. How does this one open up? Okay, this one goes backwards. Cool, so it appears to be, it's missing Max, but it does have Frankenstein, which goes on this little board like this. And you can pretend he's being electrocuted. It also comes with this thing here, which I think is just um, snapped off. So I need to find out where that goes. I think it probably goes like there. But yeah, this is one I've always wanted as a kid. I think my friend had it. I definitely remember it. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, next up, we have this really cool lizard guy. Um, missing so many pieces, but all the um, structural pieces are there, including the, um, these often missing pieces, like the stick thing there. We've we'll got an anchor, if you will. This one doesn't really seem to want to close up. Uh, and then we have the gorilla. He is really cool. I don't know if it comes with any pieces. 
Oh, it has Max there. That's quite cool. And it does come with this um, kind of like tribal guy. I imagine it's missing something, which would be its nose. So that's a shame. Um, so it's a bit of a <laughs> stereotypical thing of a boiling pot and like a, a tribal guy. Uh, yeah. Needs a clean as well. But yeah, he's cool. Then we have this cool little rat bear thing. He has his little figure, but missing Max. And he has like a, uh, is it like a Mastodon or a um, Woody Mammoth in the middle? These are really cool. There's going to be a lot of cleaning. I mean, I keep mentioning cleaning, but then another set um, that, look how filthy that is. Um, I think it goes like that or like that. But this is a really cool big set. I don't know if I have the other one or not, the other wing. But um, yeah, just, I don't even know how to open this up. That goes like that. This is one of the big sets. And then we have a bag full of figures. I do have some spare figures somewhere, so that's pretty cool. That is a really cool set. I think that goes like in there. Creates like a really weird wing thing on him. I can't remember where it goes. Like that or something. I think I got them. I hope I got the other one. Unless maybe it's missing. But this this job lot is just getting unbelievable how big it is. So we also have loads of minifigures in there, which is good, and some more pieces, the smaller heads. This will help complete sets, which is really good. Um, you have this really cool alien spaceship. This is quite a desirable piece. It's one of the play sets. I think there's a majority of the actual toy line is actually here. The one that I'm missing is the spider, which I had as a kid. And then, yes, if you saw order earlier on, I had this one here, which didn't open up. But here's one which does open up, and the little dinosaur goes in there. I've also found this random little caveman figure, which is really cool. So I don't know who he belongs to. It might be the same set. And then finally, I have all these pieces here, which I think the majority of these go towards the like kind of like skull mounting thing. So I'm going to try and give you a bit of a shot of all the, all the stuff I got. So I've got all of this. There's loads and loads and loads of my Max here. Um, just loads of little ones. A lot of cleaning, I need to clean all of these and a lot of listing, a lot of sorting, a lot of finding pieces. So this is a project, this isn't, you know, time is money. So this is, this was worth it for what the price I paid. If it was twice as much, I wouldn't have paid it. Just because it would have taken me ages to go for all this. But anybody see anything they like, I will, um, I'm happy to do deals cheaper than what it would be on eBay. But um, don't hit me straight away with messages because I need to clean this all, all this up. So give me a bit of time. Or if you do message me, you know, just be a bit patient. Yeah, all this is really cool. So this wasn't the only thing I got for this chap. He said, come back and um, if you um, if I find any more, you can have them. So I did go back and he did. I think he found these two. So what I did see on his stall, I said to him, would you um, do this for like a deal? Two things as well. So this really cool... Uh, Dalek, it's a um, classic Dalek, it looks like it's from the 60s, a 60s style one. It's made by, I think it's character options, so it's probably about two or three years old. It might be this year actually, they've, they've released a lot of these ones recently. But yeah, it's based on the 60s TV show, Dalek's not the 70s ones I don't think. Really cool. Um, so him, final thing, was this Ripley um, with the, the power loader. Now I am... Um, Always wanted this as a kid. I think this bit's missing up here, which is annoying. But um, they're all over the price. I mean, when I go to toy shows, you always see them. But people want like £45 loose, and you're thinking that's just too much. Then some people want like £10 loose, and you never really know because you never want to ask anymore because the prices are all over the place. But it came with this bag of bits as well. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm holding the camera now because the room is just so small to do stuff in. And this camera is rubbish. 
Um, I think that there is the um, Batman grappling Batman animated character uh, hook thing, which I think has some value. So yeah, all this stuff and all the stuff my dad bought and all the other bits. It was it was I I think it was a good day for considering how many stalls there were selling this type of stuff. There must have been maybe fifteen at, at the most. Um, I would say probably less than that. A bargain pickup, just a lot of work to do. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Sorry, this one's a bit of a hickledy pickledy sort of video. I do appreciate all your comments and your likes, and all subscribers. Thank you very much. If anybody sees anything they like, please head over to our Time Tunnel Toys group and page on Facebook. We also have an Instagram, Time Tunnel Toys UK, on both of those, and you will see a lot of this stuff for sale. We'll be at toy shows, probably any sees our next show. So we hope to see you there. As always, thank you much for watching. Take care. Happy hunting. Stay safe.